Welcome to the podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time, a Kessor's family production. In this episode, we are going to talk about overcoming obstacles, sticking to your values, and the Carolina Panthers. Our guest today is Tiffany Lewis, founder and president of SCSM. Tiffany lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. She is a loving mother to two young children, and she is full of energy and motivation. SCSM is a fitness apparel and accessories brand located here in the Queen City. The goal of the brand is to inspire others to live a lifestyle guided by fitness and faith. Tiffany brings perspective of someone with incredible work ethic and passion. She is very much focused on growing her business and impacting the lives of her clients, and we just love that about her. Let's get into it. Tiffany, welcome to the Entrepreneur Perspectives Podcast. It is great to have you. Thank you so much, Eric. Glad to be a part of it today. Excellent. So we're going to start with 10 questions requiring a more thoughtful response and end with 10 rapid-fire questions. You ready to get started? I'm ready. All right. So you heard the intro about you, but of course we cannot do you justice in one opening statement. So tell us something real about you that the audience doesn't know. Uh, Well, I'm gonna back it up to the fact that you mentioned something very pertinent. I'm from the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm very, I'm proud about it, Eric, because uh, it's a city that has grown and it continues to grow good or bad. Um, But other than that, I'm a wife, a mother, of two little ones that keep me going, they keep me on my toes, an 11 month old and a two and a half year old, a boy and a girl. Um, And I love fitness, it's definitely important to who I am, what I do, I've always been an athlete. Um, I just decided this morning though, uh, I'm not sure how many of your listeners are yoga enthusiasts, I wouldn't say that I am, uh, but I did go to yoga this morning and it was one of those things where it's like, I needed to be there, I needed to be on my mat And so that's something that I'm just now getting back into. It's like, I've never been like this yogi, but I've always had this, you know, tie to it. So uh, I love yoga, I love fitness, and I love how, you know, we as people morph and change and you have to listen to your body and adapt to it. And so, um, yeah, that's a little little bit of unknown facts about me. That's great. And other than, yeah. Is for yoga, is this something that you're taking on new? Like you haven't done a lot of yoga in in your past? I have not done a lot. I I used to run a great deal, but then of course you realize as you get older, it's not good on your joints, right? Yeah. So so it's one of those things where it's kind of like a transitional sport. I train a lot. I have a retired NFL trainer um, that I train with here in Charlotte at the Charlotte Athletic Club, and he, he, he definitely pushes me, but it's one of those things, after having my second child just recently, I just felt my body kind of changed and I listened to it. And I think yoga is really like the best response, Um, not high intensity, uh, you know, impact circuit training or anything like that or long distance running. Just really me, you know, kind of searching inwardly and and listening to my body and and pushing it that way. Yeah. And it's amazing how big it's gotten. I remember just recently I was walking down the street. I think it was in downtown Matthews, just south of the uptown Charlotte. And, mm-hmm. and there's these two buildings that are kind of side by side to each other. And there's like, you know, in the back, there's some grass and it's a, it's a, I don't know, a beer garden or some, some sort of brewery there. And you look to your left real quick and there's a hundred people doing yoga, like just out of the blue, <laughs> you never <laughs> expected it. And it's just amazing how big it is. But like you said, like so many sports have such high impact on your joints and body and it, uh, obviously yoga is um, growing fast. And see, back to my point, Charlotte has changed, and that's one of the good ways that it's changed. You would have never seen that, mm, we can even say three years ago, uh, you know, even with the rapid pace of, of yoga picking up and just, um, you know, of course, CrossFit and everything like that, just being able to see the city around us change and grow um, and then being, a be, being able to be a part of it, and which is why you invited me on the podcast today, because as Charlotte has grown, uh, you know, my company has grown and other small businesses grown. So it was exciting. Yeah, uh, I mm-hmm. get it. Now you said you were an athlete. Um, you've been exercising in fitness. Have you played sports in your past as well? <laughs> Just recently, people do not consider this a sport, but I did receive a 
full bowling scholarship in oh, wow. college. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it's a sport. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it paid my tuition. I'm thankful for that. I think if you get sore after doing some activity, that it could be considered a sport. And after you bowl, yeah. I mean, you are you can be sore from it. It's the truth. Yeah. Your leg. <laughs> Your, your quads, your your forearms, all of that. And and so, but before that, um, my go-to sports were, you know, in school, grade school and high school were uh, volleyball, basketball, and then a little bit of track here and there. Okay, excellent. And volleyball is another sport that's getting big, especially for women. My daughter, who does a lot of dance and gymnastics, and, and we play sports and play catch all the time, so we're always just messing around. She wanted to play volleyball this year. And I think that's really cool. And then uh, the place they go, Carolina Courts, um, in South Charlotte, it, you know, it's a huge basketball facility, but it's fast becoming a big volleyball facility as well, especially for young women. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love volleyball. I'll, you, you, anytime I'm on the beach, which is rare. Yeah. Uh, uh, but when I am, you know, I will definitely be up to a pickup game. So yeah, I love volleyball to this day. There you go. There you go. Well, cool. Well, that's some awesome insight into uh, your world, Tiffany. And so now in your yeah. day-to-day work at SCSM, what is your focus and what's the ultimate goal for the business and then yourself? I try to keep I try to keep the day to day simple, you know, really focusing on making quality athletic apparel, um, athletic sports and fitness apparel that extends hope and faith. That's what we do every day. Now, how we do that, um, of course, you know, just it's all contingent upon what we have going on. But, you know, hope um, it, some of my biggest blessings came in the form of others giving me a little bit more hope in myself growing up in my abilities. And then you sprinkle that with some faith, a lot of faith actually for me, um, that's where I am, where I am today. And so uh, you, it's kind of unconventional to most is to say, okay, well, how can you really extend a message of faith and hope through clothing? And so, and that's the challenge that I take on. Um, and, you know, some, so many years later, we've been able to successfully do it. And the story continues to paint itself almost as more people flock to the company and they learn more about us. Um, yeah, so we just try to interweave those messages into our apparel in our storyline. That's awesome. And how is how is your business going right now? I mean, you're 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 growing fast. You know, things are happening. Obviously, it, every day is different, I'm sure, but business is going well for you. Business is going well. It's one of those things though, just having um two little ones at home, especially my 11-month-old who is quite different than my daughter. Um having that pull but at the same time a push you know children are pulling a push right (laughs) uh and so just really trying to balance that and ensure that they know that they're my priority but at the same time you know the pulls and push of SESM they are not going away they're remaining constant so it's just one of those uphill climbs that I continue to figure out how to navigate as you know each day passes it's one of those things where if if you could say yesterday was identical to t- today and then you can predict how every day would be, it might be a little monotonous and boring for some. It, it would especially be for me. And so it's one of those things I just take the ebbs and flows of what the day um, gives me and try to create some course correction as I go. Uh, but yeah, as far as like you know the growth that we're seeing, I'm excited about it and we have some wonderful things um, that we're working on. And so it's especially, uh, you know, here manufacturing with a, a major uh, textile manufacturer just two, two hours away from our downtown office in here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it's so much excitement, so much growth going on, but at the same time, just maintaining that balance with my family is one of the most important things. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you speak uh, in a lot of similar ways as to many entrepreneurs that we talk to. It is finding that balance but also finding, like you just said, like not having every day be monotonous and enjoying yep. that journey that you're on. And, and that's the mm-hmm. exciting part about it. It's not for everybody and we don't pretend that it should be for everybody, but yeah. you know, having that entre- entrepreneur is a buzzword right now. I know it is in the title of the podcast, but but it's real. You know, If you're a part of the entrepreneur life, let's just say, um, you have to enjoy all the differences and all that you know all that is ahead of us because like you just said there are no guarantees with what's going to happen in any business I don't care if you're an entrepreneur or not there are no guarantees out there and you have Absolutely. to enjoy it yeah yeah and having young kids understand I have three myself and you know I understand how your yours are the age that they're at um, that takes up a lot of time in a good way but it takes up a lot of time nonetheless 
I commend you because you sound so poised. This is the first. This is the first time you gave me an in that you had three kids. So you have you have you have a daughter who's playing volleyball. She's yes. in 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 high school. No, no, no. She's in. Um, she's this- gonna be in well, fifth grade, and so she's my middle. Oh uh, wow! She's my first daughter, and then I have a younger one who's six, and then my oldest is a is a boy, and he is uh, believe it or not, he just turned thirteen, which blows my mind still. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So she started volleyball really young. I didn't start until what well middle school so seventh grade yeah. so relatively the same I just yeah. it's just it's amazing like these different sports it's like you know the very the common sports like you were just talking about before there's so many of those that you got to play soccer you got to do this for you now all these newer sports are becoming um, fashionable in a way and you show yeah. up and I, I was taking my son to basketball games at Carolina courts and there would be like 200 girls coming out who would just finish their volleyball practice or volleyball games that they had and I'm like wow this is really catching on it's very cool to see that's really cool yeah so and you know these kids have a passion for different sports and some pick it up and you know some don't or they have a passion for something else which then leads to the question of removing all that you do for SCSM obviously your mom with two kids what is your passion uh, in your life I I would I would really say helping others see the strength and gift inside of themselves I I know it probably sounds a little bit kumbaya-ish but I mean really if I had to reflect on what I've been able to do every day and what that consists of in and outside of um, corporate America that that's it I mean at least that's what comes naturally Um, I can be a bit straightforward though and sometimes it may come across as something different but as you peel back the layers of who I am and, you know, what it is that I'm trying to accomplish personally, um, you know, it's just a direct rub off in terms of me pushing others to accomplish the, the greatness that lies within them. So that's what I would say my passion is. Um, and now, of course, we create our own passions and I can list several of those. But if I said, what do I do effortlessly? It's really helping others um, identify the strength inside of them. I like how you just put that, how you, what you do effortlessly. It just happens. It's just yeah. ingrained in who you are and it's just what you do. And, yeah. and then it, 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 I'm sure it feeds itself into everything else that you're doing. And that could yeah. only, that could only be a good thing. Nothing bad can come from that. I hope not. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you never know. Right. But yeah, I mean, overall yeah. you do the right things. That's the most important stuff. So, and as you run your business, you know, being a woman business leader, and we've talked about this, you and I, um, offline, we've talked about it. What is your perspective on being a woman business leader in 2017 and going forward from here? There's so much growth, and I'm talking past and present, um, and so much opportunity, but there's still still so much progress to be made. Uh, Just yesterday, it's funny, I had a um, conversation with a, very prominent clothing designer. Eric, have you ever heard of Two Chains? What is that? Have you ever heard of the artist Two Chains out of Atlanta? Yeah, sure. Okay, so this rapper out of Atlanta is yep. very prominent. He's 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 done some cutting edge things, but this designer has had the opportunity to um, design for him the dabbing Santa sweater, which made you know two and a half billion dollars in a couple of months. I mean, just uncharted sales. And, um, and so this is one of the things that we're working on, you know, collaborating with him on some future um, athletic designs, which is pretty cool. Uh, but he, he actually said that many men are still intimidated by women, um, especially women who are business owners and they have their stuff together. And you know what, you know, coming from a corporate environment, like working for one of the largest financial institutions in uh, North America, and, and while I was there in the world, we could say, um, that really kind of touched on in territory where I've never heard anyone say it, acknowledge it, especially not from a male perspective. Um, and so it kind of resonated with me. No, it really resonated with me, but it, it really, I think, touched on the fact that, like I said, there's so much growth that has taken place, but it's so much more growing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so going back to, you know, the earlier conversation about, you know, being in small business period, um, I think is really about finding your way to maneuver through those things, you know, um, the challenges that come and also celebrating, uh, you know, the successes that come with being a woman entrepreneur. So it's pretty cool seeing the dynamic, especially in the city of Charlotte. Um, they embrace it, uh, but they're just 
I think there's still much more progress to be made in yeah. the area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you're a part of that progress, right? I mean, as as I, as a leader in Charlotte, and you're around it every day, and being a woman business yeah. owner, business leader, I mean, you're you're at the front of that movement. And yeah. like you said, it's it's come a long way, but I agree, it has a long way to go. Um, yeah. And, and hopefully, having a platform, even like this small podcast, you know, can help just a little bit. I mean, that's that, like you said, that's the journey of the business that you're on. And it's not just your Mm -hmm. business, it's the overall. um, And I I look at that no different. You know, like I said, I have two daughters. Um, I have a wife and, you know, my wife is doing a lot of different things. You know, it's important to continue to to build that way. Um, And Mm -hmm. for these people to become leaders, because it's hard to get jobs. It's hard, you know, jobs are different and they're very specialized. And when you come out of college nowadays, like what are our kids gonna get into? And the ones that can start for themselves, um, no matter if they're a man or a woman, um, let's do it. You know, that's those are the ones that are going to make differences uh, as they get older. So all of the young ladies listening, <laughs> this is a charge to you all. You can do it. That's it. You can do it. That's yeah. It. I love it. That's great. So and, and obviously you, you, you have that passion and you have the values that you stand uh, and you've started to get into this a little bit. And you said you've built your business mm-hmm. on three core values. Let's talk about those. Mm-hmm. What are those values and why are you so passionate about them? Yes. So, so a little unconventional, at least the third one, but faith, uh, which we've touched on family and fearlessness or, or, or fearless. Um, I'm passionate about them because it, you know, they're all fuel in their own regard. Uh, they're all fueled. The experiences that build your faith are fuel. I'm sure anyone would say, okay, well, hey, these are some of the things that really tested my faith. And can you go back and use that as fuel for something else? Absolutely. It helps you grow um, in other areas. Um, the challenges of family, it's fuel as well. You know, knowing that I have a limited amount of time um, that I can fully designate each day to, you know, pouring into SESM and then knowing that my children still need me in, in really trying, and my husband as well, let's not leave him out. I love you, DeAndre. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and trying to figure out how to balance it all, you know, while growing a company, it's fuel and fear should be used as fuel. Uh, you know, it, I think it goes without saying it could be one of those paralyzing things or it could be a propelling um, thing. And so, you know, I'll say, for instance, I'm taking swim lessons now, and, and I'm the same age as Beyonce, <laughs> and uh, but I've never officially learned how to swim until now, and um, I'm, what, four lessons in? Um, but I fear not being able to touch the bottom, and maybe that has more of a dual meaning, but I just, I always fear not being able to touch the bottom in the deep end. And so after cheering my children on, like I said, I have an 11 month old and two, two and a half year old. And my daughter has been in swim since uh, 18 months. And you know, here she is floating and learning all these life safety measures and I'm cheering her on. And I never knew how to swim. Now, mind you, I wasn't afraid of the water. You know, I'm jet skiing in Miami with dolphins and parasailing and doing, you know, a lot of stuff safe but at the same time you know around the water um and so i use that fuel which was fear um to you know the the fear of not knowing how to swim or not being able to touch the bottom as fuel so all of those things um are core to SESM's values and they're core to my values and hopefully you know people will listen to this and and be able to use it adapt the same thing and use use those things as fuel for their lives yeah and that's what happens you know not being an entrepreneur and starting your own business talk about being scared and not and having the unknown but i have to ask so um you you mentioned something about fear and, and, and swimming um do you listen to tim ferris and his fearless um show that he has or his podcast that he listens to have you heard that by chance I don't. And, I, and I haven't. A, I haven't and heard. I was it. just curious because the reason I say that is um, he's got a show. It's called Fearless with Tim Ferriss. He's the guy that wrote the Four Hour Work Week, and um, in it he talks about how he never learned how to swim properly, just like you said it. So that's why it made oh, me wow. think of it. And he's like, he got lessons on how to swim, um, and he does a lot of different things that he talked about. Just putting your face in the water, like starting so small and then working your way up, and then he took yeah. it to all sorts of different things, like you know all sorts of different uh, fears that people might have. And it's just when you started going down that path, I was like, wow, that sounds so familiar. And you hadn't listened to it, so I think that's really cool. Um, but you might want to check that out. I think that you'd be very interested in that. 
I am. Quick question: Is Tim Beyonce's age too? You know what? Yeah, I think I think he's very similar ages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's where it is. There's a connection to cool. it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We're 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 in each other's head. I have not heard um, his podcast before or that interview, but I'm definitely going to check it out. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I think you'd like that. So, and you also yeah. touched on this a little bit. Um, we've been talking about the Queen City, about Charlotte, and, and you know how things are mm -hmm. happening. But as you build your small business, what's your take on the role of small businesses within a local community like Charlotte? Knowing that, you know, Charlotte for many years is it's, or still is known as a banking center for the huge banks that are here and very large companies. You know, but then we bring in small businesses like your companies or my companies. Like, what's your take on their role within the community? Uh, small business is critically important to the community because it's the voice of what people see, say, and do daily. Um, so like you said, I worked in corporate um, for some time, and um, during that time, I did a ton with the chamber. We raised a lot of money with the Charlotte Chamber uh, of Commerce, where I saw the importance of small business firsthand. And I'll say this, every big business relies on small business. And, and I'm going to repeat that because I think... Um, it wasn't until my time with, you know, doing those volunteer hours with the Charlotte Chamber that I realized that, but every big business relies on small business. And yeah, it might come in the form of general contractors, it might come in the form of subs, but it doesn't matter, they rely on small businesses. And so it's important for us to grow our businesses um, in a way uh, where we're recognized and acknowledged and pulled on when those times come. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's very important to the community. And you are, you receive uh, good feedback, you know, when you deal with people in the community about the small business that you have. And I agree with you also, you know, a lot of these big companies, these big banks rely on they're some of their biggest clients are the smaller businesses. Um, so you're absolutely right how they, the big businesses can um, feed off of the smaller business, but you're seeing, mm -hmm. um, Good feedback in, in the stuff that you're doing and you have a say in the community uh, with what you're doing in your small business? I have not, I don't think I have a say so much, well, well at least not one where it's like, oh, Tiffany's speaking up personally and <laughs> yeah. it's been recognized. But I think just from the sheer um, acknowledgement and adapt, you know, adoption of, hey, the Carolina Panthers coaches have acknowledged what we're doing as a company and embrace what we're doing so much so that they've supported and you know even wear some of the SCSM apparel. I mean, I think that goes without saying. I couldn't have said that three years ago, right? But I could say it today, and so that's a huge organization, and it's one of those things where um, who would have ever thought? And I think still thinking about unique ways to be able to work with uh, organization um, at that level outside of banking, you know. I, being able to create unique um, partnerships with bigger organizations, if you present it right and you have uh, you know, a track record of doing good business and a great reputation, I don't think um, you'll get too many no's. You'll, you'll probably get some, of course, that's just the nature of business, sure. but I think there'll be an upswing as far as you know, who will readily embrace you. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's cool. Yeah, so you've built relationships with, I mean, you just said, like the coach of the Carolina Panthers and some big name, big name athletes. You know, we can see it on your Instagram account. Uh, Instagram mm -hmm. account, sorry, Jonathan Stewart, Mike Tolbert, Thomas Davis, and others. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. um, how do you help them, and how do they help you? Uh, uh, I, they, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. They love their family just as much, and, 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 the, and faith is just as important um, to them as it is to me. And so I think, you know, that mutuality, you know, it, 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 it's a reflection of, you know, who we are, who mm -hmm. we say we are. Um, so that helps, you know, just being who you say you are in this day and age where so much social media, people are not, not who they say they are or project to be, right? Yeah. Um, but it helps me because I have a real vantage point um, for the apparel products that we're producing at SESM. You know, being able to say, okay, well, at a professional level, hey, this is this is who we're producing for, and this is who where our product. But then being able to trickle down to some of the audiences that that they're touching um, directly, um, and have those lasting influences and in, in, in impressions in the younger generation, which I think is so important. Um, that's how they help me, you know, both personally and professionally, and hopefully, I help them by giving them. You know, 
athletic apparel for free. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but, it's but a- no, uh, <laughs> in seriousness, um, just by being genuine, I yeah. think I think that's important. Just by being a genuine person and knowing that, um, hey, you know, the the, re- the relationship is genuine. Like back, going back to what, what I said, you are who you say you are, you know? You're not there just for handouts or, you know, what people believe yeah. to be limelight and all of that stuff. So it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, it's a mutual respect I think you're talking about um, where it, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Just having a relationship yeah. where you both respect what you each other do and mm-hmm. and help each other out in, in the smallest yeah. way or the biggest way. It doesn't matter, I think. And that's what you're talking about. And, and athletes are people too, right? You know, a lot of times athletes are yeah. put on this pedestal and, and it's funny, you know, uh, as we've developed our business and our brand, Sports Epreneur, we've had people in the athlete world come to us and the more and more we talk to them, it's just like, they're just everyday people just like us. They just happen yeah. to be on TV sometimes and or a lot of times, you know, depending on who they are. So and as you've probably seen, you know, you know more, many more than we do, but I mean, these athletes off the field, uh, for the most part, are just genuine human beings, right? Yeah, and I'll and I and, and I'll share this, and I don't think Jonathan minds if I do, but just last Sunday we were at Top Golf, and his brother just got his brother Corey just got promoted to major in um, the military, and it was one of those things where we're coming together, you know, family, friends, and so forth. Um, to celebrate him and Jonathan gave the speech before he cut the cake and he said hey you know a lot of people commend what I do on the field which is you know the glitz and glamour of it but you know he said I could never do what my brother has done he's been to Afghanistan Iraq and everything like that and he served our country and he's done this selflessly and then, you know, Jonathan, he, he backed that up to uh, even in high school where uh, some friends, one of them may have been, you know, uh, affiliated with like a gang or something. Um, it, but they were going to, you know, maybe fight this boy and, hit, and, the, and, and, and Corey jumped in and interceded then. And so it's been one of those things where Jonathan just really um, highlighted what's really important in a, in a day to day. And of course, football is fun. Jonathan is an, an exceptional player. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, just really being genuine in that. And I, I, I couldn't have, you know, I, I think I'm not doing the story or the speech justice, but the point being, you know, being genuine. And then of course, keeping genuine people around you, family, of course, is very important. So it was, it was really cool to be able to witness that and then share in that celebration. Yeah, I believe it. It's interesting. I mean, he would never remember this, but uh, it was, it's been a while now, some years, but I uh, went to a big brother, um, uh, the Carolinas golf tournament and Jonathan Stewart mm-hmm. was, was there. And, you know, he's mm-hmm. very gracious he played golf with everybody, took a picture with everybody, mm-hmm. just chatted it up. Like he wasn't anything, he wasn't trying to like pretend he was anything special and he was just there and enjoying the moment and gave a speech and, and talked about how important uh, that organization is to him and his life and the Carolina Panthers. And, and you know, it's an amazing thing to see. And then you just kind of reiterated that and just, it keeps, keeps on going. He keeps doing the same thing and he's not the only one. There's a lot of athletes yep. that are doing that thing. And, and that's pretty amazing stuff. And it gets out yeah. there, right? And these types of stories, right? Uh, podcasts or it goes on social media, or it goes on Instagram. It's amazing how now uh, the platforms that people have to tell these stories and to get it out there to be like, wow, these, this really great stuff that they're doing. So, and, and at the same time, we can use it for our business, right? As far as the social media is concerned, and as you are growing your business, and you know, we've we've uh, had conversations through Instagram. I think it was the first place we actually met, um, believe it or not. And what is, I guess, what's your take? What's your perspective on social media for someone who's on it every day and using it to help grow your business? I, I have an unusual perspective. Um, <laughs> I, it, it's needed, and because you know, and of course, we're in an ever-changing you know, technology, technology, robust society or whatever. Um, everything is so fast paced. And so I kind of think of it as roulette and I'm not a big gambler by any means, you know, um, but I do like, and I do play Russian roulette. Um, and it's like, if you ever notice, they're always telling you, Hey, hurry up and place your bet. Right. And, and it's one of those things. Well, I don't adopt to that. Um, you know, I you know I, I understand the rules of the game, but I don't adopt to the you control my pace. Mm-hmm. 
And so I, it, it's in, in my analogy might be a little bit off, but I understand it. If you're going to play, um, don't let outsiders, you know, dictate your pace. And I think that's very important to social media, not just Instagram, but I mean, Instagram, because it's more widely used and you can post a photo and now you can you post videos, you know, so instantaneously. And after you do that, they want something new and next, right? Um, but I think it's important for people to realize in social media period, especially when building a company and building a brand, don't let the outsiders control your pace. And I say that you'll look on um, our SESM Sports Instagram page and you'll see that we have not thousands or even hundreds of posts. Um, and of course, you know, maybe that's a good thing to some, maybe it's a bad thing to others. But it's one of those things where if we're remaining true to our values and we're remaining true to our community and those who are really supporting us, um, it takes stepping outside of social media to do that. And so and it, just because you're not posting something on social media doesn't mean that you're not um, making a difference or or doing business the right way. So. That's my perspective about it. I love it. It's needed. But at the same time, don't let outsiders control your pace. Absolutely. No, I think that's important. Yeah. And, and I agree. Um, you know, and for some for, for a group that's that uses social media and we help other clients use social media, we always say if it, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it because that'll show yeah. through as well when you're trying yeah. to fake it. And, and it's just like, are you playing the game now or are you seriously mm -hmm. are you are you all about this? Because that's what you have to be. And yeah. you know, I think you're right. You go to your Instagram page, and it, and it comes across just like you said it. So there's, if once I meet you and I go to your Instagram page, I get it. And other times yeah. I'll go to an Instagram page from a company that we talk to, and I don't get it. And yeah. I think you have to marry those two. Uh, I think it's very important. Mm-hmm. So that's good. So um, talking about you know, different content platforms, uh, obviously Instagram being a content platform, we have our own content platform, which we address as Sports Epreneur, and that's the Instagram account that we had kind of had conversations on. We wrote an article about three ways to deal with a setback. Uh, in this article, we discussed how to handle a setback, and, but really how you can make the most of it. And just like any entrepreneur or any really anybody in the world, they've, we've all experienced a setback just like you have in your business life but that also helped you achieve success with your current business. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? <laughs> Eric, as you're, as, as you're asking me that question, my heart is like yeah. increasing in speed. Um, but, but, you know, just to be transparent, as, as transparent as I possibly can for the audience and uh, for the podcast, um, you know, we, we, we all deal with setbacks. I had a former business and things were going great and we were doing some really cool deals and then you know a sharp transition or at least it felt sharp to me it lasted a, a series of months um but you know a sharp transition nonetheless in business and i had to shut that company down literally uh and so and shortly after getting over that setback um cam newton he moved into our building we live in a high-rise building in downtown charlotte and he became our neighbor. And so, you know, every day you're checking the mail, it, it becomes a thing at this point because you see the mail room full of boxes and boxes from the company who we had just finished tussling with, you know, some months um, prior to that. So his first year in the NFL, he's our neighbor. And of course, you know, he's getting these boxes and these packages, it seems like every day, right? Every week at least. Sure. Um, and it was the wildest thing to see uh, and to experience because I know what I dealt with personally. And of course he didn't. Um, and no one else around me did except those close to me. And so it was one of those things is like, okay, well, it took me a while, but that setback, um, you know, it really helped propel me in a direction where it's like, okay, well, what am I, am I focused on the right thing? And, and of course, something like that, you know, dealing with a big company, um, it can be somewhat intimidating as far as, you know, hey, you're in business, we're in business, but we don't want you to be in our space. And I'll say it like that. That's the best way I could say it. Um, and so it kind of makes you question, are you, are you doing the right thing? Do you really want to do what you said you're set out to do, right? And so I developed some tough skin um, after really getting over it personally. Um, and then I trudge forward. And I think what I learned is that that's what you have to continue to do. And so, you know, the no's that you'll get in business, 
Um, you might take it personal and hopefully you don't as much. Uh, and then you trudge forward, you know, and, and, um, yeah, that was one of my biggest setbacks. And of course, you know, personally they happen as well and family, you know, just trying to figure out how to mother and now mother two times over and, um, and still be a good wife and be a good friend and have a social life and all of those things, you know, and run a company there. They, they can all be perceived as setbacks, um, or going back to what I said earlier, you could use it as fuel. And so I just try to take those experiences and, um, and, and, and use it as fuel to propel forward. Yeah, I love how you <clears throat> I love how you tie it all in together with the fuel, which you would you know kind of address before. And that's something we mm-hmm. see a lot with entrepreneurs that you know they, they have this common theme into everything that they've done, and it, mm-hmm. it was all because of a setback or a situation or something that happened that that allowed them to say, this is what I needed to do going forward. And that's where that setback, you know, helped you out. And it's a terrible thing. Like you said, as I read the question, you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I got to go there again. It's like getting <laughs> kicked in the stomach one more time. And, yeah. but it, but it's real. And it's, it's important to remember those things that did happen, but then move forward from there uh, and, and learn from it and be better and have your business be better for it and your life be better for it. So yeah, uh, it's a pretty amazing story. And then sure enough, you walk downstairs and there's Cam Newton, you're right. He's one of the more larger than life figures in, in the world of sports today. And uh, yeah. staring at you every day, you're like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and nothing to do really with him, right? It has nothing to do with him. It's more of the, nothing at it's, all. it's the business. It's that's the world we live in today. So yeah, wild yeah. stuff. So that was obviously something that happened. You maybe didn't fear that in your business life, but you know, as you are working in business, and chances are, I don't think you fear a whole lot in your business life, but if there is something that you do fear, what is that in your business life? It's that I'm gonna get so rich, I'm gonna go buy an island and only want to go swimming every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, biggest, biggest fear in my business life, that, 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 that's a tough question. I. I think I think if I had to categorize um, something that I think about and try to shape in my mind um, as a fear, I would say it is it is I, you know you you don't really get a roadmap as to how to do what you do. You know there are entrepreneurs everywhere that you can glean from, um, you know past and present, right? But it's one of those things where it's like the, the how. And, and it's and this is more more about your journey sometimes especially you know if you are the founder of a company the how uh, could you be more efficient in your how could you be better in your how so being able to landscape your day every day and say okay well this is how we're um, trudging forward and then you know and then once you begin to bring others along right um, you want to make sure that your how reflects the big picture of your what. And so I would say that's my, my, one of my big fears, you know, just, um, writing the how, and then knowing that the how is going to pop, hopefully positively, only positively impact other people, but you being in charge of, um, creating that how and that what every day, it's kind of a fear. It is. Yeah. And it's like almost, you can think about it like getting lost. Um, and getting lost, you're on your way and you just, you get lost and you're like, wait, what was I doing? And, and that's a concern, yeah. right? Because you can get sidetracked, yeah. like you were saying before, that you could end up on a beach, in a remote beach somewhere and you <laughs> thought that was it and then you get there, you're like, no, nah, that's not what I wanted to do. This yeah. isn't it at all. Yeah. Yeah. So that's there good. you go. Yeah, that's great. Well, so you've given us, you've, you're, like you said, you're, you're very direct and, and we appreciate that, especially on uh, a platform like a podcast. And that, that makes a difference, not only, I think, for the podcast, which helps us out, but for yourself and then anybody that's listening to it. So we really appreciate it. And that was, you know, the more, and especially in the more thoughtful uh, questions that we like to give out. Don't go anywhere because we are going into some rapid fire questions right after this message. We would like to take a quick moment to tell you about an organization we work closely with called RODS, which stands for Racing for Orphans with Down Syndrome. We are a proud supporter of RODS Racing. The RODS mission is to nurture a positive image of Down Syndrome, to promote awareness for the adoption of orphans with Down Syndrome, and by participating in organized athletic races and awareness events. Ultimately, the goal is to find homes for all orphans with Down Syndrome. Because of our relationship with the founder of RODS, Brady Murray, 
we are honored to be able to contribute our work in the area of marketing to create even more awareness around RODS and their mission. You can learn more about RODS at RODS.org. Now we'd like to move into the rapid fire round. So to, to take a to take a playoff of what we were talking about before volleyball, like I'll, I'll serve to you, and you got a I got a fierce serve, so you got to return that serve. Um, so we'll move a little bit faster, but some are more difficult. So take your time with those. So you ready to get started? Okay. Let's do All it. All right. So what book are you reading right now? Love and Respect. Don't ask me the author, but. Okay. Uh, it's a reread. Um, maybe I didn't glean enough the first time, but I'm reading. <laughs> okay, we'll <laughs> find it. I'm sure we can find it on Amazon. <laughs> we'll put it in the show notes for that. How are, are you? Re- how are you reading it? Is it hardcover, paperback, Kindle? Hardcover. I love turning pages. Okay. So do you don't use yeah. a Kindle or app? You no. Okay. I like it. What is your mm-hmm. favorite social media network and why? Ah. Uh... I don't have stock and company, but yeah, Instagram. I mean, it goes without saying. It's intuitive. Uh, you, yeah, it's it's fast and intuitive. I like it. What's your social? What's the social media app you do just you just don't get? Um, Snapchat. Okay, that's a common. <laughs> and I think if I I think if I did a survey, like it's maybe every time. If not, it's almost every time. Do you, why is it? Is it just something that? just like how to get followers is it is it you know what i think it's not the abyss of followers you know that's one of those kind of like sunken hole questions i (laughs) I think it's really like hey this doesn't do anything more than what this app already does so but but i think the nostalgia of it is that your stories disappear on their own Mm -hmm. right yes but they never really disappear i mean you know my husband's in it so i know Anything that's transmitted in that space never disappears. <laughs> no, it's so there. Teams, yeah. yeah, it's there. So <laughs> remember that, guys. Yeah, another message to all those lists, all those young listeners out there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, though, in uh, in your space, um, Snapchat could have potential um, because you know, depending on who's buying your apparel, um, mm-hmm. there's there's different ways that you can possibly advertise uh, doing using filters you know especially at a big sporting event let's say like a Carolina Panther football game and people are outside tailgating or in the game and as they do a filter they might come across your brand or like an image uh, like the bitmoji type of thing you've seen before but perhaps the bitmoji is wearing your t-shirt in some form or oh. fashion and like oh wow that's a really cool t-shirt I'd like to have that and 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 just interacting um and kind of being real like you are uh you might be able to play off of that it it is a difficult platform and i think there's a lot of things that could change with snapchat uh you know their stock price is below their ipo price which obviously isn't good for investors and there's already been rumors that google offered them uh a deal and they won't you know facebook tried to buy them before that's when they then they got instagram wouldn't be a surprise if facebook maybe makes another play i have no idea i have no inside information at all just kind of taking guesses here (laughs) from what i hear but you know snapchat's definitely a platform that is there right now and people are intrigued by it it's just where does it go from here but i definitely think that um, there's audiences that are there, their attention's there, and if their attention's there, that might be a platform for you to spend some time with, but, you know, just speaking out loud. So, so all the Snapchat gurus, all of you little teens and college <laughs> students that are Snapchat gurus, please, hey, d- direct message us because we're not on Snapchat yet, and, and tell us that you can help us um, get up to speed on the Snapchat there you path. go. There you go. <laughs> the Snapchat path. <laughs> I love it. So we know the Snapchat is not your most important phone app right now, but if you had to say which one is, what would that be? Oh, undoubtedly Sprout. It's a baby app. You know, it it, it it's it's just input app, but it kind of helps me keep my sanity. Um, I've I've had it since my daughter's birth. And, you know, hey, from diaper changes to feedings to, you know, when did I pump breast milk, everything. It helps me out. It does it all. <laughs> I love it. And it's sitting right there on yeah. the front page of your phone, isn't it? <laughs> it well, on a second. I don't know why it hasn't been. You know, these smartphones are not so smart. It should be. <laughs> whatever app you use the most, it should automatically be put on the front page. I like that. Hey, Apple, I, yep. I think you need to integrate that into your technology. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just some another entrepreneur coming up and saying, let's let's 
figure a way to make that happen. There's got to be an app yeah. for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's something we can tell an a young entrepreneur to focus on. But you've given a lot of good feedback to, um, you know, to, to our young listeners and to the audience just in general. But if you were to tell one thing to an up and coming entrepreneur, uh, what would that be? Uh, focus on your foundation, the foundation of, you know, why you're starting and build it up. And, and don't deviate from that. Of course, it'll change, but don't deviate from what the foundation is, you know? Um, otherwise, things will topple over. Yeah, foundation. So we talked a lot about the city of Charlotte. We talked a little bit about mm -hmm. the Carolina Panthers. As we know, they made it to the Super Bowl two years ago. Obviously, that was a big deal. What impact did you see that having on the city of Charlotte? <laughs> if the statistic that 100 people move to Charlotte every day is correct, <laughs> I think that may have something to do with them making it to the Super Bowl. Um, but yeah, just just so much building, you know, and I've lived in downtown Charlotte for mm, at least 12 years now. And so it's one of those things where I've been, been able to see where, hey, one rate, one way uh, roads become two way roads. And then, you know, the light rail coming or that right now I'm looking at our, our office and they're not the light rail, but they're building a trolley mm -hmm. um, to co go down the street on Trade Street. I mean, you would have never thought about that. And so the development and all of the growth that's happening, they have to be able to keep up with it. Um, some of the ideas in terms of how to do that may not be the best, but you know, it is what it is. It's a reflection of growth. So yeah. a lot of growth to the city. Yeah. And that, and, and the Carolina Panthers would be putting, helping put Charlotte on the map. Charlotte was already on the map, but bringing that to it as well, just continues to bring a lot of eyes, um, into the city, you know, just like these other big events, like we just had the PGA championship here and there's more big events coming and all that stuff does is just bring recognition to the queen city, right? Yep. Yeah. So what's a personal story that got you where you are today? Wow. <laughs> I thought that would have been one of the other questions. Before. No, yeah, we like to, yeah, you know, you go quick because, you know, there's a lot of different things that might be out there, but <clears throat> like to throw it in there just to like maybe confuse everybody a little bit. Yeah, a real personal story. I, my, my father was killed when I was nine. And, you know, from that time, I thought that I was going to practice law. You know, I'm going to law school um, because I want to uphold injustice and everything like that. And um, <laughs> but that's not that's not the path that I obviously went on. Right. But just that experience, um, you know, coming up with a single parent in a single parent family and then having your brother who's younger than you rely on you but at the same time you know you try to grow and be as strong as you possibly could and, and excel in school i think that carried over to um who i am you know personally and you combine that with my my already makeup to you know drive forward and and be the best me um that's why I am where I am today because of those experiences. And then of course, a lot more if you filled in, but that experience sure. in, in and of itself, losing my dad and having to figure life out the way I did. I mean, of course I had, you know, family who was there, but it's never, no, it's nothing that replaces having parents, two parents in the home that can kind of guide you through life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I was lucky enough yeah. to have that. But, I, you know, it's it's amazing to me to hear everything that you said and then you follow it up like with that story about your father. And mm -hmm. obviously we hate to hear that. And but how everything you do just continues to fuel what you're doing today. And you're taking these experiences and making a difference. And it's 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 amazing to to hear this. And I didn't know that. And it just carries on. I mean, this is this is what you're doing. And it rings true with whatever, with everything that you're doing. So I appreciate it. Yeah. So if we are to pick the pace back up a bit, um, if you could pick, and we, we've talked about sports obviously a lot here. If you could pick only one sports team to root for, what team would that be? It would be, it would be the Panthers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Carolina Panthers. I was a, bas a basketball fan for the longest time. And so I would have said the Hornets. Um, but no, the Panthers, I love football. I love the feel of the sport and just, you know, the fanfare that it brings out. It's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Yeah. You know? Football so. is so big right now. Yeah. And yeah. So, but you are a Hornets fan obviously as well. 
And, yep. But that's a tough, <laughs> NBA is tough, right? Because there's only a few teams that seem to be in it. And the Hornets aren't one of them, although they they have a pretty good they have a pretty good team. It's just like how you can how can they compete with the Warriors, the Cavs, and maybe now the Celtics and some other teams, right? Right. So, all right. So, who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? Panthers. Are they? Uh, uh, I, I, I hope so. You hope so. Uh, Julius Peppers is back. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, KK you know is a franchise player now so he has some some more proving to do even though he's done great to get to where he is and i mean you know jonathan has a daughter so i'm sure he wants to he wants to you know like celebrate that with her at the super bowl already being there um and experiencing that like why not go back and be able to celebrate that with your family yeah. um it's just so many reasons you know personal and professional i just think it feels right at yeah. least to me yeah no that Thomas, makes sense well they they yeah. got there they got so close right and, you, oh, and then they have yeah. a little bit of a setback last year but yeah. you know they have a good team they seem to have a good draft and you never know um yeah they got the quarterback so yeah so it should be good yeah excellent so I want people to be able to connect with you. So I want you to, you know, list out for us, you know, your, what, where you want them to connect with you. And also if you would, you know, what are your final words of encouragement for the audience? Let's start with the words of encouragement. My final words of encouragement are maintain your integrity, have fun, and then just, you know, keep the right people around you. I think if you do that, um, you know, things will shape up and, you know, ideas will come. If you're on the path of starting a business or if you're already there, yeah, just maintain that integrity. And um, of course, you know, I think faith is also important to, you know, you know, just everyday life. And so hopefully, you know, uh, you build on your faith. And then um, connect with us, social media platforms, SCSM Sports, that's Instagram and Twitter, as well as Facebook. And you can find us on SESMSports.com for our website and see all the new and cool happenings, uh, new product releases, um, updates, interviews, and so forth. And of course, we're going to share this podcast on our website too, so that's cool. Um, and then if you want to email me personally, my email is T as in Tiffany Lewis, L-E-W-I-S, at SESMSports.com. That's excellent. Well, Tiffany, it's great. We, we really enjoyed having you on the podcast. Uh, you talked a lot about being fearless, and, and that's a big thing. And obviously, you, like I said before, you stay true to everything that you've gone through in your life, and we'll continue to watch your business grow. We're excited about it. And just once again, it was great having you on this podcast. And thank you. And as a thank you for you and your audience, I want to um, send you all off with a, a, a discount promo code for, um, you know, 30% off any products, any purchases um, from our website. And so we'll we'll do CAS, K-A-Z-30 as the promo code. And so enter that at checkout. If you're listening to this and you like what we're creating and you like our products, uh, use that at checkout and then receive a, a discount off your, your purchase. And I appreciate uh, the support in advance. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And we're going to put that down in the show notes description. So anyone that wants to take advantage of that kind offer, uh, they'll, they'll be able to do that there. And thank you so much again for being on this podcast, Tiffany. It's great having you. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. Tiffany, it was absolutely awesome having you on this podcast. From the passion Tiffany brings to SCSM and her willingness to help others, to her knowledge of building a company, Tiffany is a great example of how to grow a business in today's world. The perspectives she brings to running a clothing company and on this podcast specifically are now perspectives you as a business owner and entrepreneur can use for yourself. And for that, Tiffany, thank you. And for any business owner or entrepreneur that is overcoming obstacles in their business, I would encourage you to watch a person like Tiffany Lewis. She is someone that made a change in her business and has not skipped a beat. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. You can contact me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz or with the same name on Instagram, or you can find us at KazSource.com with links to us on the different social networks. Thank you for listening to our CazSource podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time. And until next time, we're out of here.
A big thanks to Rods Racing for their support of this podcast and allowing us to contribute to their inspiring cause. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. It's a big deal to us. We hope you found value in it. And if you did, we would be incredibly grateful if you gave us a review on iTunes. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and feel free to share it with anyone you know. More than anything, thank you again for listening. We appreciate it.